You found a place to belong here in the Circle of Friends. I'm Missy, and I'm with my good friend Libby. How are you, Libby? Missy, I'm good. (laughs) And, uh, you know, listeners, I think you're familiar with this, that before we even come on air, we sit around the table and just talk. Yeah. And, And it's always so good. Um, and Missy, I appreciate you praying over us and praying over everything. Uh, but wow. So when you ask how I'm doing, it it might even be a little bit different than when I first walked in the door. Amen to that. I understand that. Boy, listeners, if you don't have, uh, good friends, um, good godly friends who love the Lord and who love you unconditionally, man, start asking God to show you he wants that. That mm-hmm. is his desire for you. I've often said that we are, we are, God's given us the gift of one another. We are a gift to each other yes. from God himself. Oh, yes. He's given us that so that we can get through this life, this journey that we're on that quite frankly, quite often is difficult and hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think in the midst of of the time that we're living in right now in our culture and in our world, uh, there's all kinds of crises going on. There's global crises and national crises. There's personal crises. There's always some some kind of challenge that is before us. And God is the only one with the answer to that. So, oh, man, that is so, so true. And Missy, when you said that profound statement about we are gifts to one another, and wow, it imme- immediately made me think, how do we treat that gift? Ugh. How do we treat that gift? But here's the other thing. <laughs> Bear with my my thinking here. So when I was thinking that thought as you were talking, I was led to this. Have you ever gotten a gift that you really didn't see that much as a gift? Like it's like, how, <laughs> how is this good? Whether it's a blender yeah. or, a, or a vacuum cleaner yeah. or an exercise machine or whatever. But here's the thing. It was given to you as a gift, and its intended purpose was to help you. Yeah. Was to help you. Yeah. So I guess my point in all of that is maybe we even have people in our lives that we think, how are they a gift mm-hmm. to me? Mm-hmm. But you know what? They can be. They can we, be. We find what we're looking for. And yeah. if you're looking for the gift yeah. that someone can be to you, God will show it to you. And then the flip side of that is, is there anybody that's thinking about Libby and saying, <laughs> how in the world yeah. should I consider her a gift? Yeah. No, I, I, it goes I both hear you. ways. It goes both ways. You know, I, I was chuckling because I remember um, a number of years ago, I, I accidentally found my Christmas gift for my husband in a closet. And uh, I was not too excited about it, to tell you the truth. I was like, what was he thinking? It's a brand new <laughs> set of golf clubs. Uh, go back to our very early first years of marriage. Um, we decided we were going to learn to golf. And we had set, we were just college students. So we set a small set of clubs on layaway. You know, I was already, and then I got pregnant. And I was like, oh, well, I'm not going to be able to use these clubs. And maybe I don't, let, so, right. we, so we, you know, moved all that money over into the baby fund rather than the golfing fund. And I hadn't thought about golfing, honestly, since then. That was a number of years. And there were those golf clubs. And honestly, Libby, I was kind of ticked off. I was like, really? Really? This is what you're going to give me for Christmas? I mean, it was it was bad. <laughs> uh, the Lord had talked to me about that for a while, about being grateful for exactly what you said. It was a gift, you know? Yeah. Plus, I'd ruined his surprise, all of that. Aww. Well, <laughs> let me tell you what. That gift of golf clubs... He, um, we eventually moved to, out to Nebraska and he got me lessons. He said, I'm not going to try to teach you to golf. (laughs) We tried that on the tennis court, never worked. So we're just going to get somebody else involved here. And, uh, he, so he got me lessons at a local, uh, golf, uh, shop and I, I loved it. I loved, I loved it. Libby, I loved it. I'm telling you that that was the most fun, having those lessons and realizing what fun it was and then golfing with him and going out and doing that. Now, because due to health problems right now, we're, neither one of us are golfing much. But I often think back to that and think, man, so ungrateful and so upset over a gift that God, certainly Ned intended it for my delight, but God intended it for my delight. Right. And, you right. know, unwilling to even be open to that idea. I was, I was upset for a while. I mean, eventually I got over it and I did thank him. Uh, and later I really thanked him when I realized how wonderful it was. But isn't that just like us? We just 
th- we think we know what we want. That's mm-hmm. because we we're arrogant. Let's just put it out there. We're prideful. We think we know it all. We have our opinions, mm-hmm. and our opinions are right. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm just being honest. Most people face life that way. I, I know what I know. And you don't know because you just don't have a clue because you think differently than me. So obviously, you. I mean, we don't want to admit to that kind of thing, but there is a lot of pride in us. And Mm -hmm. God hates pride. Well, I I totally can say amen to every word you're saying. And, And it's because, oh, I'm so thankful that God has shown me and I have taken the opportunity to see where those things are in my own life. And that's probably just scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. But one of the things, uh, and you said this, Missy, that God has shown me through the years is I cannot know the intent of the giver. Mm -hmm. I cannot know the heart of the giver. I can only know God's heart because it's revealed to me. He reveals it to me. But here's the thing. I don't even know my own heart sometimes. Oh my gosh. And when I do, I realize, wow, Jeremiah was right. It is wicked and deceptive. Who can understand? I know I can't sometimes, but it, 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 it compels me to run back into the arms Mm. of Jesus. It really does. And here's the thing. I've said it before and I'll say it again. (laughs) I'm speaking to myself most of all is to believe the best about someone Mm. and what they're choosing to do. Now, I'm not talking about law-breaking behavior, immoral behavior, but you said it, Missy, we see things through our own lens of perception, through our own lens of experience. And I remember a gift that Mike gave me years ago, uh, just one of my birthday gifts, and it was a book by Evelyn Christensen called Are you ready for this? Now, before I say it, remember, we're talking about how gifts can be not genuinely, affectionately received. Lord, change me. And so my husband is giving me a book that says, Lord, change me. And I'm perceiving that and grasping that as, So what does he want changed about me? What's he saying to me? What's going on here? And I was ticked. I was. And so, you know, I shut down, as I normally did back in those younger, younger days, but not for long. And, And I did bring it up to him. And it was so good to be able to have the discussion because his response was, well, I know you really like that author, And this was like the latest thing she's written. And I just thought you might enjoy another book by her. (laughs) We make assumptions, don't we? We we sure do. do. So do. And and you know what? Okay, if that's our default, name it and claim it. Mm -hmm. But don't live in it. Right, right. Don't live in it. That, I think, is the key to it, is to recognize it so that we aren't living in it and we're not not reacting. Oh. Rather than responding. That's right. And That's right. a reaction is an immediate kick, whatever. You know, it just mm-hmm. comes out of whatever's in you. A response is a hesitation. It's it's a thoughtful process of sort of processing all of what is going on mm-hmm. and then responding in the right manner. And I admit that I more often react and then have to come back and respond Mm -hmm. over the reaction that I've already had. Hmm. That's the wrong way to do it, folks. You really want to learn. You want to learn the lesson of this, to learn to respond and not to react. You are going to have a reaction. That's kind of, that's that's just natural and normal. And a lot of it has to do with emotional stuff. And it could have nothing at all to do with the present day. It could be something clear in your past, whatever. There's so many reasons it, it, the reaction could be there. For and it could and it's obviously unique to you and your situation, your experiences, and what you've gone through. So someone may be legitimately doing a wonderful thing for you, and they and you you can get highly offended. I, I've told this story before, but when we when my husband and I were house parents at a home for um, uh, teenage moms with their babies in Knoxville, Tennessee, we had a young girl in there. Uh, we just had the one one girl at the time, and I remember she had said something, and I I I merely said, "Pardon me," because I didn't hear. Her. Now, to me, 
that was a very respectful and polite way of saying, excuse me, I didn't, I didn't hear what you said. That's what I was saying. That's what I thought I was saying. Mm-hmm. She went into a rage. I mean, like literally lost it. And I was dumbfounded. I mean, I apologized, but at the same time, I thought, what, what, I, what? And I, I never got to the root of it. I don't know why she did that, but she heard something totally different than what I said. Right. And just the fact that I could acknowledge that and see that changed the course of the relationship. And it was important for me to see that and to be careful not to say, pardon me again. You know, I, I, I explained to her what I meant by that. I apologized to her if I had offended her, which I had obviously had. But you know, we, we have a choice at that point. We can either, I can either say, well, that's really stupid. I didn't say anything. What, what's the matter with you? Or I can, or I can look to find out what their story is or a portion of their story, or even understand right. that they have a story. Mm-hmm. There's some, there's some backstory there that, that triggered that response in her and undoubtedly some kind of pain, you know, that's where the anger comes out of. So, uh, we have a, we have a choice to make in, in these situations. Are we going to react or are we going to respond? Are we going to step back? Are we, you know, that, and I, I feel like that's where true humility begins. When you recognize you don't have to be right. Mm, you, don't have yeah. to, you don't have to prove anything. Yeah. You know, I'm, I, as I'm listening to you, the, the old uh, adage comes to my mind, count to 10. And it is so true. You know, before you respond, count to 10. And, and we can look at that and think, oh, what does that have to do with anything? How is that going to work? It does work. If you silently count to 10 as you're processing through what you said is a reaction, and I'm glad you said we're all going to react. That is the normal human response. And you know what a reaction does is it, it, it triggers things in you to give you the gift of choice. Mm. What am I going to do with what just got triggered in me? I think it's a gift from God. I think our reactions are a gift from God showing us our humanity, our humanness, I should say, our humanness, and then compelling us to lean back into him to find the right response mm. to whatever's going on. Missy, there's there's more that I think we need to talk about with this, but I know it's time for a break. So let's do that. Listeners, thanks for joining us here on this Monday. We will be right back. Are you bored deciding what to wear each morning? Let the experience team at the Village Barn Boutique revamp your wardrobe. With an ever-increasing selection, you are guaranteed to find the perfect piece. Located in the heart of Amish country on State Route 39 in Berlin, Village Gift Barn, never ordinary, we promise. The cross is standing fast Defying every blast Hallelujah The winds of hell have blown The world its hate hath shown But it's not overthrown Hallelujah, hallelujah Hallelujah for the cross Hallelujah, hallelujah
We're back here in the Circle of Friends. I'm Libby, and I'm here at the table with Missy. And wow, it's it's Monday, and it feels good <laughs> <laughs> to be with you, Missy, and to be just talking about the stuff of life. And, and it's amazing. Uh, once we get started, things just kind of snowball, and sometimes not in the direction that we originally thought they would go. But it's so great to just have your conversation centered on the Lord being at the table mm, with you, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I, I, we're talking about reaction and response and the difference between the two. And I, for me, this is me personally, and it may kind of be out in left field there, but I've often had the thought that the big things, the big problems in life, the big challenges, the big crisis, the big, the really, 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 really big things that are way too big to even begin to imagine how you're possibly even going to get through it, have been easier for me to look to the Lord and trust and rest in Him. It's the day-to-day grind that I get wrong, mm-hmm. but that's the mm-hmm. stuff that's so important. You know, it's it's the waking up in the morning And getting the day started off and maybe having a reaction and not taking the time to respond, that's where the rubber meets the road Mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. How am I going to look at other people? Or uh, as you said earlier, this this gift of of reaction kind of gives you... uh, an idea of what's happening in your life and where God right. needs to work. That's right. So what does he need to work on? And will I let him work in the same way? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, f- I faced a few challenges in my life where I feel like, yeah, I really did trust and wait on the Lord, and he helped me in so many ways. Where I see me falling over and over <laughs> is stumbling over the little things, you know, the little everyday things like, oh, I shouldn't have said that, or oh, that was the wrong attitude, mm-hmm. or oh, mm-hmm. I, I really need to have more compassion and mercy for that person. Or I haven't really stopped to think about that person's story. They just made me mad. Well, Mm -hmm. why did I get mad? Why did I react that way? Why did I get mad? If I knew their story and what happened to them, would I still have responded in the same way? Probably not. Probably not. Um, When we take the time to look and listen for another person's story, what's happening with them, and we see people as people, as God has created them to be, that I mean, and, and take the worst thorn in your side person in your life or the worst person you can imagine. I think I've said to you before, Libby, back in the day it used to be Hitler. It seemed to me the most evil. Now we've got a whole bunch of other examples of people who truly have, been, have done evil things. They have a story. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've sat across men who've been in prison for some horrific crimes. They have a story. Now, that doesn't mean I agree, as you said earlier. I don't agree with what they've done. But can my heart not feel compassion for someone who has that kind of a story, those kind of challenges? Who's to, who's to say that I wouldn't, you know, there but for the grace of God go I? I mean, there is some real truth in that. We don't know how we would have responded in situations. Oh, so, so true. So compassion and mercy, and honestly, I'm talking about myself now. I can't humanly manufacture that. I can I can come up with some sympathy if I work really hard. But true compassion and mercy has to be from the Holy Spirit himself. And I have to put myself in a position to listen and to look for it, to be ready to offer it. Yeah. And before all of that, I got to I got to recognize the depravity of my own heart and soul in life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got to look at my own sin. See, that compassion and mercy has been poured out on me, and that's why I have it to give to others. Absolutely. And, and you said you have to, uh, you know, make yourself available to, to God changing that in you. I know how desperately I need that and not a once and done thing. Yeah. It is a moment by moment recognition. You know, Missy, as we were talking about reaction and response, what came to my mind was our reactions are God's gift to us to show us who we are. Our responses are God's gift to us to show us who He is Mm. and what He can do in us and through us and to us and for us, not just for our sake, but for the sake of others. And so reaction leading to response is absolutely a gift from God. We simply need to make sure we're not we're not acting on the reaction. We're acting out of the response. The response. Yes. Yeah. And you know, earlier when you talked about your um, situation in Knoxville, 
in, in that home for moms with babies, that example just really made me think again about the importance of owning whatever your part is in a situation. And you know what? You may be, and when I say you, I'm speaking about anybody. Any of us may be completely innocent of what we're being accused of. Mm -hmm. It, it, It may be totally not something that we've done at all, but is there a part of what happened that we can own to diffuse the situation and to invite conversation? Yeah. So with your situation, you couldn't own at that moment what you said because you didn't understand how that was offensive, but you did own the fact that she was offended by yeah. it. And again, you don't need to take that on yourself, but you could say to her, wow, I I really apologize for what came across to you as something that hurt you. Now, you're not admitting that you hurt her or that you intended to hurt her. You're just saying that because it did hurt her, you can own that part yeah. of it. And that may be very little, but if we just take that 10% mm. and recognize, okay, I obviously should have done that differently. We need to own 100% of that 10% exactly. or whatever it is. And then if we have then invited a conversation and engaged further with that person, chances are we're going to get to the root cause of, of what just happened. Mm. And even if we don't, we know that in as much as it's possible for me, I have done all that I mm. could to be at peace. You know, Libby, my, my mind is going to the verse that talks about... Um, Grace upon grace. I mean, just oh, how much yeah. we've been given over and over again. I, you know, maybe we should look at those verses. It's in John, John one, I think. Um, let's start with. Oh, well, let's back up to verse fourteen. It says, "And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth." John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And verse 16, And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. I mean, it's just this idea that we have received from Christ grace after grace after grace. And when we think about Jesus being on the earth and what he faced, he did not react. He responded in every situation, and you Mm -hmm. see it. He responded with love. He responded with truth. Truth and grace going hand in hand. He he had some harsh things to say to some people, but it was truth that they needed to hear. Out of his love for them, he Mm -hmm. wanted them to recognize that. So I, I think that translates to our own walk with Christ in that we absolutely must own our reaction and what we say. And we, because we've received so much grace, we are in debt to others to, to pour that grace out to mm, them. Absolutely. It's not our responsibility for them to react or respond in the right way, but we need to respond in the right way. Mm-hmm. And we need to offer that. And I think by, by recognizing, as we talked about earlier, if you have a reaction, you know, do some self-examination. What is it, Lord? What is it that you are... What is it that's in me that's making me react in this way? And how should I respond to that reaction? What should I do now Mm. with that? Uh, A lot of times for me, it's like uh, confess and repent and, you know, try again, (laughs) apologize, you know, start over again, whatever it takes. And I, I really appreciate what you said about not taking on somebody else's, like I couldn't take on the hurt that she received. I had offended her, that's true, but it's as if I bumped into her broken arm. Right. I didn't mean to, I'm sorry, I bumped into your arm, but I didn't break your arm. So for me to take responsibility for her broken arm doesn't make any sense. Although we try to do that, don't we? We take on guilt, false guilt and shame all the time, and that's not of the Lord. Yeah, either we do it or we allow someone else to yes. do that to us. Yes, I I think that happens a lot, and and I'll tell you what, Missy, I think part of it is, and I'm going to throw a word out there that might trigger people. The word is 
trigger. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes I hear that and, and it triggers me. But I love what you said about paying attention to your reactions. When you find that you're reacting to something, that something has triggered you, instead of getting angry about it or pointing the finger at whatever it was that triggered you, look at yourself first and say, what's going on here? I mean, do you really want to live with that for the rest of your life? Yeah. Or would you rather not get it out and deal with deal with your trigger? Hmm. And I'm not saying that that you're going to be trigger free, but it's a gift of God hmm. for him to come alongside us and help us to know how to view that trigger, how to embrace it, whether that means you're going to live with this for the rest hmm. of your life or no, I'm here to take that away from you right now. Uh, but on the other the other side of the coin is we can do that for us, but we can't do that for anyone else. Yeah. And so we still need to be compassionate and empathetic yeah. toward the triggers of other people. Exactly. That doesn't mean I'm going to find out about somebody's, okay, I, I'm, I'm just going to add fuel to my fire here. If I'm not going to find out about somebody having an abortion and then go to them and talk to them about the evils of abortion or whatever. No, I need to have empathy and compassion for them. Hmm. That's a trigger that they're going to need to learn how to manage and handle. I can be with them in that, but I can't do it for them. I can only do that in myself and for myself, and ultimately through the transforming power of God. Hmm. And, and that is it. Yeah. So we are at the end of our day, aren't we? We are. I can't believe how fast it's flown, but... Uh... You know, I think the challenge, at least the challenge that I'm taking away, and listeners, we hope that you take away this challenge as well, uh, to look at myself first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Because there are things, as you said, Libby, we, we are not responsible for other people's reactions, uh, actions. And we have no control over that. So don't take that on. We are, however, responsible for our, our own actions, our own attitudes, and we need to deal with our sin that's in our life. So looking to ourself first admitting the sin we have, I think is the first place for all of us to start, to, to begin to live humble and grace-filled lives that we can offer mercy to others because we recognize how much mercy has mm -hmm. been shown onto us. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Listeners, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll be back tomorrow here in the Circle of Friends. This program was brought to you through the generous support of donors and listeners like you. To contact Circle of Friends Ministries, you can write to P.O. Box 345, Berlin, Ohio, 44610, or find us on Facebook at circleoffriends.fm. Program archives can be found at thelight959.com.